Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and let's put together our version 10 dust boot. Let's get into it. Uh. Your kit will basically come with a two inch long brush, um, as well as this is the maglock round adapter. You'll need to glue the mag ring onto the mag, lock, uh, mag round adapter. Uh, this is the four inch version, the 80 millimeter four inch version, version 10. Um, this fits onto a four inch hose uh, going to a dust collector. We do have a two and a half inch size if you need that. Um, but you're gonna take the mag ring, one of the mag rings, and glue it right into place. Just put some glue right along the um, interior edge here slip it on just clean up any glue that might be on the uh, outer end ring here and just set that aside and let that dry we're going to do the same thing to this little ring here so this ring sits down into the plastic in, into the acrylic and it's held on by three screws but before we do that let's go ahead and put our mag ring on there. okay we're going to glue our mag ring right onto our mag joint that's the piece with the three screws here and put a little this is the gel glue from gorilla i really like this stuff because it gives me something i can easily see and it doesn't run all over the place when i'm using it so we're going to put some glue right across all the way around there then we're going to take the joint and the the mag ring and put it into place kind of wiggle it around just kind of spread that glue around and we're going to want to make sure that each of the the screw holes in the joint are right dead center from two of the mag rings now this is where you could take some just before we set this aside we're going to take this and we're going to kind of wipe the inside of any glue that might have squeezed out during this process just to give us a nice clean receiving part uh, port for our for our uh, hose adapter so with that in line we're going to set that aside and let that dry and clamp and let's work. so let's get our band clamp started first so we've got the yellow mounting color here we're going to take it and we're going to set the, the screw so the hole lines up with the screw. So we may need to reduce the size of the band so that we can get it properly seated into the yellow collar. So it's best just to go down to roughly about 80 millimeters. Okay. So we've got pretty much all the way down to 80. So we're gonna take the band clamp and we're gonna kinda of slide it into position. So we're gonna get the, there's a bit, bit of fighting for it. There we go. So just slide that down into position. And once that is there, you should be able to see the screw right through the hole so that you can then put your screw through that hole, or screwdriver through that hole, and tighten and loosen as necessary. So, that is it. It should be pretty flush right across there, and our collar piece is ready. So we're gonna take our, uh, I'm gonna do the magic of a TV, and I'm gonna peel that acrylic off, or that uh, acrylic paper, protector paper off from the acrylic. This is half inch acrylic uh, for the four inch sizes, which is much larger, larger, provides a really good stiffness to the actual boot, so it holds on really nicely. So we're gonna take this and the magnets on the, this side, <laughs> we're gonna take the collar. Let's say we're gonna mount this onto a water-cooled spindle. Um, we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it right up there. And these two screws, these two screw holes should line up with the um, heat inserts. Now, your acrylic may have come with those in place. Just kind of, just kind of pop them out. Uh, let me grab that thing here. 
There it goes. This should pop out real easy. Let's see. So we're going to put this here. Now, um, one note. So for our water-cooled spindles, which are not using this spacer, we're going to use the shorter screws. So since we're doing this for a water-cooled, I'm not going to be using that spacer. If you're using the air-cooled, you'd use these longer screws. But since we're doing it for a water-cooled here, we're just going to use the shorter screws. So we're just going to tighten these down. There's no need to do a whole lot of tightening on them. And you could also use some Loctite on these screws if you'd like, just to keep the screw in place so that it doesn't uh, unfeed due to any vibration or something. I did design the inside of the plastic so that when the screw goes down into the heat insert, on the other side, the screw will pass right through that heat insert and right into a, a glob of plastic so that it helps to prevent it from removing. Right, but you can use Loctite on the on that screw if you'd like. So now, if you're putting this together, the V10 together for your air-cooled spindle, we're going to basically take the mounting collar here. I'm going to set the uh, spacer right into place with the notches towards the bottom. Right, this is the, this is the bottom over here. I'm going to have that flat side right there. Align those notches, and we're going to line it up with the magnets being on the bottom, the spacer being on the bottom, and the collar. So I'm going to flip it all over here. We're going to take these longer screws, drop those down into place, and get them started in our heat inserts down there, and in, in that are embedded into the mag mounting collar. Take that. We're going to. Tighten this up using a three millimeter hex driver. There we go. We're all set. We've got a air cooled version of our version 10 uh, dust boot. All right, now that we've given our mag ring and joint assembly uh, time to glue and dry up, um, we're going to take it and install it into our acrylic. So we're going to take it from the top side of our acrylic. We're going to set that down into place. There's three corresponding notches on the acrylic, which allows the joint to slide right into place. Then we're going to take our M3 screws okay. here. This is a two millimeter hex driver. Apparently I've used my T driver right there way too much and I've already stripped it. But tighten that down until it doesn't go anywhere. And let's do that to the other two screws. All right. Now, we've got our screws. You'll notice that the magnets are nice and aligned here. Uh, one on either side. That gives plenty of room between the uh, mounting collar and the joint. And our assembly is basically complete. This is the upper half of the V10 mounted specifically for the air-cooled spindle. Um, because we've got the black collar on there. If it was for water cooled, we would not have the black collar in place and the yellow would be right on top of the acrylic. So let's set that aside and let's work on our brush track. So, okay, here we are with the brush and the brush track. This is the track with the magnets on one side and a track opening space on the other. We're going to take our two inch brush here and let's start right up here at the front. So you'll notice on these particular brushes, there's this weird little angle thing here going on in the backside. That's where the brush actually sticks out a little further to avoid being tangled up by the bit. So there's this little angle here. Um, we're going to start over here on the far side, which would correspond with the hose adapter side of the brush. So we're going to take our brush, just kind of set it down into place and work your way around pressing the brush down into the track. There will be some areas that are a little more difficult. What you can do is grab a flathead screwdriver and you can put it right up against that seat. The seat being 
the big thick plastic piece that we're pushing into place. Um, there's some ledges on either side that you can actually use a flathead screwdriver to help drive it into place. But I would encourage you to try to do it by hand at first just to get it started and then come back with the screwdriver as needed. And remember when we get down to this bit to the bit side of the track it's the brush is going to start folding outwards. Um, I think, believe it's a uh, 15 degree angle and maybe a little more. But just keep working your way around. Don't worry if you don't have it fully seated. Um, there's a spot right around here where I had some trouble. I couldn't get it forced in by hand. Um, these tracks, we go with this. This is a nylon seat. Um, it means if you bend it too far, it will break but it does allow for a more consistent thickness of this seat which is better aligns with um, what the 3D printers can accomplish when printing. So now that I've got it mostly installed I'm going to take my flathead and I'm going to come in here and seat the brush the rest of the way down into the track. Now I'm doing this all by hand. You shouldn't need any tools. Um, if you do, maybe a little tap of a hammer, a gentle tap of a hammer should be all that's required. Again, I'm just setting it. And if you notice that the brush is starting to fold in a little further, you might press down the other side of the track. Or it may be that the brush has just got a little squished uh, during transit. Um, but the brush is um, just a gentle heat gun or something um, and allow it to uh, sit straight down, allow gravity to kind of clean it up um, will be fine too. So now that I'm at the end, I've already pressed all of the brush around. I'm going to take the end and I want to make sure that I'm going to align it. So I'm going to look at it with my eyes here and I'm going to try to guesstimate where the end of the track is. We always ship these brushes with an inch or so more than what's actually needed so that you can adjust it for your specific brush. So I'm using a, uh, a flat cutter here, although you can use uh, scissors or some wire snips if you need to. But our goal is basically to kind of trim that brush back so that we can get it fully seated into place without interfering with the other end of the brush. There we go. And our goal is to make sure the brush is seamless. You'll notice you don't really see any seams as to where I cut it because I cut it using a flush cutter and trimmed it gently. I made multiple cuts to trim and kind of narrow in on that on the, the perfect length. But here we are. We've got our brush track. You'll notice the brushes are all straight over here. They're kind of angled over here to avoid that bit. So we've got our brush track. We have our upper assembly. We have our lower assembly. And here we go. And I have got an extra brush track and brush and spacer here. So this is where I can explain that, um, th that fitting, basically. So let's say you've got a bit and the bit sticks down uh, a little further than it needs to go. And it's, we want that brush, this, the tips of the brush, hitting your stock material, which means we need the bit and the tips to kind of be roughly at the same area. So if you need to, you can add additional spacers and that added a half inch of thickness to the brush. It lowers it down. But then we can also manipulate it where we have different brush tracks with different size brushes. We have three different size brushes and I am working on a third one. Um, I've got a design um, that I'm thinking about with a three inch brushes. So it provides it so you can get even deeper with your carves. But you can manipulate these brush tracks. We've got an inch, there's an inch and a half. This is the two inch that it comes with by default. Um, and that way, and yeah, these magnets are really powerful. Careful of that. But you can use the boot with or without the spacers if you need to, so that you can provide that perfect alignment with your carving 
based on where your bit sits. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically modular is, is the idea here. So now that we've got the actual boot all assembled, I put one of my in the default configuration, which is one spacer and one brush track. And we've got our brush, our hose adapter. We've got our boot fully assembled. So let's go mount it on the machine so you can see exactly how that works. Okay, as you can see here, I have got the two and a half inch version of the V10. And I've got a couple of spacers and my brush track on there. So let's go ahead and set the brush, set the lower assembly aside, and we can now work on our upper assembly. So as you can tell, the screw hole is on the right side, so you can get your screw uh, screwdriver in there. We're based, and we've already built all of this over in, uh, just previously. And this has got the air spindle assembly. That's what I've got on my Onefinity Elite here is the 80 millimeter air. And I've got my Z independent boot um, support arms all the way up so they're out of my way. So I'm going to take the V10. We're going to slide it right into place. And it will be a slightly tight fit. Assuming I've got it loose enough. Let's see, let's loosen this up a little. There we go. Come on. Ah! Ow! There we go. I took a little... My, my, my moon shapes here on the back side was kind of folding in. It was making it a little more difficult to put on than it, than it was necessary. So I have got my boot into place. I'm raising it all the way up because the little notches are going to prevent the boot from going up too far. This particular designed boot, the upper assembly stays static, unlike my version 7 boot, which is adjustable. But version 7 isn't compatible with the Elite, so our version 10, this is where you've got that into place. You mount this down, and you only have to do this one time. So mount it in the correct orientation, which is basically straight ahead. Just tighten that band clamp down until that doesn't move. And now this is a static assembly, giving you full access to your bit, everything you need to do down there. What you'll do to achieve that adjustability is adjusting how many spacer tracks or brush length that you are, you know, if you order extra of those, um, we'll put it in the default assembly. I'll set the spare brush track in, out of the way, set the, spa the spacer on there, set the uh, brush track on there. And in this case, my bit is quite a bit longer than my brushes. So I'm gonna add another spacer on there so that whenever I'm carving, let's say I'm doing a, uh, let's say I'm doing a half inch deep, for example, we kind of want the bit sticking out about a quarter to a half inch below the tips of the bristles, so that whenever the boot actually comes down and makes and the bit makes contact with the stock material, you want the bit or the tips of the bristles to be rubbing the top of your stock, with your bit doing its work on the inside in there. I am running, let me get my other stuff out of the way here, just taking some photos for another customer. All right, so I am sporting uh, the V10, uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the V10 dust boot with the ultimate hose clamp mounted to the top of my spindle so that I've got the 80 millimeter base. I've got a one and a half, uh, an in, one and a half inch um, hose clamp but I've also got this extra clamp up here. This is a 90 degree, um, a 90 degree, it step, mounts right onto the stepper motor. 90 degree is in it, it comes out from the stepper motor and immediately turns up. I've got the, uh, with, this is the extra, extra large um, arm on it with the one and a half inch attachment on the top. The reasoning being <clears throat> is I could put my hose right there. I could put my hose right there and you'll notice this is a fine hose, a Turbo One. And I have got the, uh, the fine hose adapter. 
with the maglock ring connection. This allows me to plug my fine shop vac directly into my v, uh, V10 dust boot right onto there. Now, there's some extra holes here. You can put a zip, uh, zip tie or a, um, a Velcro strap right here to kind of keep this and keep it into place just in case you've got the one of the, the attachment that doesn't perfectly fit your hose, for example. But this is the inch and a half inch attachment with the fine Turbo One hose. This hose up here, this adapter up here is going to do all of the work of dragging the hose around the machine. This slack allows the spindle to go up and down without interfering with that. So this is static. This section moves as needed. This guy holds onto it and takes all of the stress of this movement away from your boot. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> so this is the boot assembly with the maglock boot adapter with the fine um, uh, boot yeah, adapter and then the 80 millimeter hose clamp and the 90 millimeter extra extra large arm with another attachment up there. Hey guys, I hope you found that helpful and useful. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments in, in the uh, uh, below or you can reach out to support at PwnCNC.com and we're happy to help you out. Um, yeah, and remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it. Mm -hmm.